Okay guys, we're going to continue discussing the compromises that were made into the Constitution. Um, we're moving away from the Articles of Confederation still and we're trying to make something new that we think will work and have a government that, that'll work for us. So the Constitution is being written. Our second issue was, should slaves count towards the state's population? So when you're looking at your graphic organizer, that's what you're gonna put under the issue, don't overthink it. Um, obviously, this compromise is no longer something that's in place since we've gotten smart, gotten rid of slavery, we know what to do. But we are going to need to look for two sides. Even before we read, hopefully you're aware of the two sides regarding slavery as the southern and northern states. And that's where we're going to end up setting things up together. So just listen and we'll make sure we know each side. So once the issue of state representation was settled, the delegates at the convention turned their attention to other matters. Should slaves count towards the state's population? That was the issue to be discussed next. Many at the convention wanted to do away with slavery altogether because it goes against the idea of liberty and independence, which we've talked about and how much it made no sense to have slavery, even as we were fighting for freedom with our air quotes. However, southern states refused to compromise on the issues, and northern states did not want to risk the fragile state the nation was in. So they're thinking, hmm, if we try to get rid of slavery now, we may not even be able to stay a country. The founders agreed to push decisions regarding the fate of slavery aside for now. And of course, we know the Civil War is going to follow with this eventually. Here are our two sides, though. Side number one, the southern slaveholding states. And what I would do is on your graphic organizer, I would probably literally write southern states on this side and northern states on this side, just so you know what the two sides are. So the southern slave owning states wanted to count their slaves towards their population numbers. So when we're talking about what they want to do, they say all the slaves should count. Since they were people, the Southerners demanded they count as much when looking at the entire state's population. And counting slaves as people would mean that Southern states would gain more representatives in the House of Representatives. This would give the South an overwhelming amount of power um, since they had far more slaves than anyone in the Northern area. And so what they're thinking here is you're going to know that each slave... Will equal one person and this is going to give the south power in the house of representatives and so they're thinking now we can start making all these decisions for the country they really wanted more power and of course you're going to see some irony that we want to count them as people when we want them to be people but we don't want to count them as people when we want them to do work for us and obviously that's where the North is going to come in and say, what the heck are you thinking? So here is our side number one when you're taking your notes. And now we're going to go to side number two. So we have our side number two starting here. So we have our Northern states and balked. Balked means they didn't like it. Uh, this idea and favored a plan that prevented slaves from being counted at all. Um, there are two sides of this because some disagreed with slavery and others just didn't want to lose any power. So they're saying we shouldn't count them at all. The southern states, northern, northerners demanded, excuse me, cannot have it both ways. They cannot treat slaves as property yet count them as people. If the south can count things they consider property, does that mean the north can count property too? Many Northerners, knowing that the South would never accept such a deal, agreed to happily count the slaves if the South set them free. So they were trying to get some of that freedom in there. Of course, that idea went nowhere. This, was no, this is not to suggest that the Northerners were entirely anti-slavery. Many of the North also owned slaves. And so it is a problem. It's going to be a problem in the Civil War. They just didn't own them to the extent that the Southerners did. The reluctance to count slaves was mainly to prevent the South from gaining too much political power. So it really was not about slavery yet. It was really about just keeping some power. And so here on our second issue, they said the slaves should not count at all.
for the population. Okay. And then it said um, slaves equal property in the South. So can we count property? And they didn't mean that being unkind towards the slaves. What they really meant there was if you're going to start counting slaves that make them work, how can you possibly justify it? And some even went so far as to say things like, should we count chickens? Should we count our houses? Should we count cattle? Saying that you can't have it where you make them property sometimes, but then you make slaves count to help you at other times. So that's our, our second side. And of course, when you look at your organizer, you would just label it as Northern States. So now down here we have our compromise. Right here is our word compromise. It means we come to an agreement. When you're writing this down, right here is the word I want you to write down. It's called the three-fifths compromise. Make sure you put that on your organizer. It says the Natria compromise was diverted, excuse me, drafted to divert this crisis. Drafted by James Wilson and Roger Sherman, the three-fifths compromise counted slaves as three-fifths of one person when determining a state's representation in the house. In other words, for every five slaves, three would count towards a state's population. This gave slaveholding South more power in the new government. However, it also allowed the nation to move forward. Northerners did receive a small win in the deal though. Both sides agreed to end the international slave trade in 1807. This meant that in 20 years, the nation could no longer import slaves. So they didn't win completely. We, the North said, you know what, we'll let you count them a little bit, but you better stop bringing them in. And so in 20 years, you're done. Now, what we know is they had an institution of slavery established in the South, meaning that children of slaves remained slaves. And so while importing, of course, or excuse me, ending the importing, of course, it was a good step in the right direction. It is not in slavery because as children are born, they're still born into slavery. So just keep in mind that it doesn't end it, but it is a step trying to end it. So here is our compromise. You need to know that it's called the three-fifths compromise. Sorry, let me write tiny. All right. The information that you need to know for it is that each slave equaled three-fifths of a person. How awful, huh? We're just going to chop them up and make them equal just three-fifths. So that means that three out of every, so for if you had, so let me say that a different way. For every five slaves, the population, a number for House of Representatives, would increase by three. So you didn't get five, you didn't get to count them all, but you did get to count some of them. And then the last thing I think you should probably include on this is that there was the agreement to end, let me put it right here, it ended the international slave trade in 1807. So I know that's a little bit hard to read, but I also underlined and boxed it right here. So just know that um, we end up counting slaves. We just don't count them as whole people. The South was okay with that. The North accepted it. And mainly the reason the North accepted it is that we are going to stop the international slave trade. Okay.